Let's not sugarcoat it, folks. Cost is the number one deciding factor between the success or the failure of an EV startup. Nikola Motors, for example, has been selling trucks for almost one year, and they've been able to validate their production processes quite well. But they face some steep headwinds when it comes to the manufacturing cost of their battery electric semi truck, which is not only eating up into their potential profits, but also eating up into their cash position. Look, there's no doubt that economies of scale is going to bring in optimization from a workforce and supply chain perspective. But those optimizations take some time to wither into the manufacturing life cycle of a vehicle. That means startups like Nikola Motors need to figure out ways of optimizing the procurement costs of their battery packs, fuel cell modules, and e-motors before they can even consider realizing any benefits from scaling up production. So in this video, I want to go over exactly the plan that Nikola has laid out to help bring down the cost of your class eight semi truck, which in turn should help spur up more demand from customers as prices come down. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, let's digest the somewhat poor finances that Nikola unveiled in their latest earnings report. As you can see, unlike the consensus opinion on Wall Street, Nikola does have plenty of cash and convertible debt to be able to run over the next 12 months. Yes, they have reduced their cash position from this time last year and also the third quarter of 2022. Not only did they acquire Romeo Power, but they also spend lots of money on establishing new supply chains, dealer networks, and investing in their Hyla hydrogen business. This means the total access to capital as of the end of last year is around $940 million. And even if Nicholas auditor disagrees with the idea that this should be counted as net liquidity, it is something the company can step into to increase its liquidity position, which is exactly why it's considered total access to capital, not actual capital. Especially as we're nearing the end of the current macroeconomic rate hike cycle, the demand for riskier assets and growth companies is likely going to increase over the next few years, which is why I think that should not be the number one concern as investors and customers for this company. The number one concern is right here, which is the price of their battery electric semi truck on the market of around $374,000. Because as you can see, the average cost of a brand new class eight semi truck in the US is between 70 to $150,000 with $160,000 for the ones that have the most upgrades. This is a really steep difference between the average selling price in which you can get a sleeper semi with the diesel, whereas with the battery electric truck that Nikola is selling, you are just getting a day cap. Now, yes, there are some markups involved with the prices that customers are paying because dealers that Nikola is working with obviously want to account for the risks of taking on such a nascent technology in their inventory. That's going to hurt their sales. And as a result, every sale they make, they want to make sure that they can get the right amount of interest and commission, which is why the price of the truck from Nikola's own hands has to come down. Lucky for us, though, Nikola is smart enough to have already thought out of a draft plan on how to reduce the manufacturing cost of that truck to not only stay competitive in a market where new companies are coming with new offerings, but also to make sure we can get as many zero emissions trucks on the road as possible. As you can see right now, as of the end of 2022, the data we have from Nikola's own presentation shows us that their non-cell manufacturing cost of one battery electric truck is around $170,000. That is obviously more than the cost of a brand new combined class eight semi truck, which just goes to show you the massive issues EV startups are currently facing. The majority of this is just the direct materials of making that battery electric powertrain, not including labor or overhead which itself account for almost $70,000. Nicholas CEO said that a big reason why the costs are high is not only because supply chains are still very tight from the massive disruptions they saw in 2020 and 2021, resulting in relatively high costs for short-term contracts, 
but also because of the fact that the Romeo Power Acquisition, which is the company that primarily provided Nikola with their battery packs, had a massive $110,000 incentive that Nikola now has to pay for. Just before the merger, Nikola did luckily announce their idea and plan to shift to Proterra power packs in the latter half of 2022. But because a lot of their supply chain had already been established around Romeo's battery packs, they had to incur a lot of the costs associated with the merger. Not only that, but other EV startups like Lion Electric had big and massive supply chain contracts with the company for which Nikola can now not oblige to. This means those companies now have to write off the $234 million in accrued expenses, which obviously is going to hurt Romeo and Nikola's brand in the short term. This means that even though Romeo had super big contracts with customers already in the EV space, a lot of them were being heavily subsidized by either state or local authorities in California. And I wouldn't call that a bad thing because the company was clearly about to increase employment in the state by launching their Cypress manufacturing facility. But what it does show is that even though in the long term the battery manufacturing industry is going to become more sustainable, in the short term, a lot of this growth is still being driven by federal and state incentives. And that's perfectly fine because we need to bring down the cost of battery packs to get zero emissions vehicles on the road. But as we've clearly seen with the acquisition from Nikola, it certainly will hurt some companies more than others. Romeo did end up casting a lot of their battery packs, which housed their battery modules, which means Nikola can potentially get over $41,000 per truck worth of savings if they move over to a machined enclosure for such a low volume production. And on top of that, because Romeo's main headquarters was in California, it was a pretty big cost to ship it across state lines into Arizona which means now that Nikola is moving the Cypress facility's equipment into their coolest facility, they should incur cost reductions of around $33,000 per truck. In total, it's difficult to estimate if this $105,000 reduction per truck is going to truly translate into lower prices for customers, but at least it will help with Nikola's gross margin, which right now is obviously in the very negative. And by far the most interesting part is that Michael and Kim Brady mentioned on the earnings call that Nikola's localization strategy will make it so that making their fuel cell electric truck at the end of this year is going to be cheaper than making their battery electric one today. And believe it or not, that actually makes a lot of sense. Because at the ranges at which Nikola is marketing their tray and the potential Nikola 2, the cost of a battery pack far exceeds the cost of the whole system around a fuel cell. As you can see, the membrane, the electrodes, and the stack itself, which is typically a proton exchange membrane, cost more than 50% of the total price. Then you have a lot of fuel management and system balancing components, whether that be compression, drying, or power electronic converters. According to the Department of Energy, that results in a net kilowatt basis cost of only $76 for an entire fuel cell system, granted at a production volume of more than 100000 a year. That means for a 200 kilowatt system like we expect in the Trey FCEW, the cost will come out to around $15,000 for the entire fuel cell system except for the battery pack. If you compare it to the average current cost per kilowatt hour of a battery pack system of around $153, you come up to a total cost parity between a battery and a fuel cell system of north of $40,000 per truck. Because to achieve a similar range of 500 to 600 miles, you would need to employ a 1,000 kilowatt hour battery pack exceeding the capacity in the fuel cell. That would result in a total cost of just a battery of around $150,000, which obviously at a production level of $100,000 a year is going to be still way more expensive than the fuel cell. And so for a zero emissions market as new as a class 8 space, there is a lot of price reductions that OEMs can squeeze out. Even though we've ridden most of the reduction in usable kilowatt pack dollar cost, there is still more room to the downside as people bring on more manufacturing plants. In the long term, there are risks that batteries could become more expensive as lithium becomes more of a scarce resource, but that is exactly where Nikola's fuel cell plan would start to come into play. Fuel cells are more complicated on the surface, but so are diesel and internal combustion engines. 
Just because they're complicated does not mean they're more expensive to manufacture over the long term and does not mean they can't save money for end users through higher practicality and lower opportunity cost. Fuel cell system costs stabilized over the past few years after declining rapidly from 2006 all the way up to 2010. But now with the recently announced investments and manufacturing facilities that are coming online for fuel cell trucks, cars, and fuel cell products, there is going to be undoubtedly a massive cost reduction scheme going on over the next decade. Bosch, which is one of the biggest fuel cell manufacturers on earth, is already planning to mass manufacture its PEM stacks as more customers are all of a sudden buying their products. And with Nikola being a longtime partner of Bosch, they'll likely be one of the first customers to realize the cost reduction benefits of their fuel cell systems. But as usual, guys, this is just my take of the situation. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and I thank you very much for watching. Take care. But as usual, guys, that is just my take on the situation. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below on Nikola's cost reduction strategy and how hydrogen fuel cells will hopefully become more competitive over the next few years. If you found some value from this video, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.